Hey, this is Charles Onyet with IGN, and I'm here from uh, with Dave Williams from Red5, and you handle class design at Red5, building Firefall. Yes, um, that's right. Can you can you talk a little bit about what that involves? Well, uh, for the most part, that means that uh, I, I build a lot of weapons, I build abilities, um, I tweak the leveling curves, and that sort of thing. Okay. Um, and here we have Firefall running live right now, and we're in the character creator. Um, so what, what sort of options do we have when we first jump into this game? Well, um, obviously, you know, it's, it's the basic stuff, skin color, hair color, hairstyle, uh, you're going to choose a face, you're going to choose the, uh, a basic armor s color scheme for your, for your character. Um, and obviously, this is, you know, because this is a free-to-play game, these are the sorts of options that are going to expand a lot. Um, in our uh, in our store when we, when that comes around. Okay, but what we're seeing here would be the the basic options for anyone who just jumped in without without paying any money. Th that's correct. Yep, absolutely. And is this where you do you do any class selection here, or that's all in game? No, you don't have to do a class selection when you create your character. When you create one character, you can play all of the classes. Um, classes in our game are built around this battle frame. You can see here this is black and uh, black and red. And this battle frame is an assault battle frame. That means when he's playing this class, he has the assault weapon, he has access to the assault abilities, and he's going to earn assault experience that he can use to, uh, to unlock more assault stuff. And then when it, if he wants to go play a medic, maybe his, his PvP team needs a medic, he just runs over to a battle frame station, switches to a medic battle frame, and now he can heal his teammates. Okay, so it's, it's pretty fluid in that regard. Absolutely, and it's intentionally that way. We want people to be able to switch out you know, from, uh, from class to class very, very easily. Okay. Um, well, yeah, I mean, unless there's there's anything else on this screen, I guess we can just jump in game and uh, get a look at what the, the actual gameplay is like. Um, I guess we're getting a little bit of backstory here. Yeah, just a little bit of backstory. Uh, Firefall takes place uh, several hundred years in the future. Uh, we found a nearly perfect power source called Christite, um, but overuse of it uh, summoned this storm called the Melding uh, to, to Earth, and it's enveloped most of the Earth except for the small area around Fortaleza, Brazil. And uh, that's that's where the, the game of Firefall first starts out, um, is around this area of Fortaleza, Brazil. And uh, you're uh, coming in on the, on the dropship here. Um, you'll see below you as we're coming in, there's a, uh, a, a dynamic event going on right over there. There's a, a race called the Chosen that, have, that, are, that come in from the melding and they're attacking the humans. And, uh, you often are going to find these Chosen with patrols. Uh, sometimes they're going to be mining for resources and you can just kill them and take the resources from them. But that over there uh, that we flew by is actually a, uh, a Chosen outpost. And it's going to take a good five to ten players to, to band up together to go essentially drive the Chosen away from town. You notice the Chosen have actually already gotten pretty close to town. So if you don't drive them away from a town, they're going to attack the town from that outpost. And there, there is quite a bit of story in the game, right? I believe uh, Orson Scott Card was, was helping write the, the story. Yeah, yeah I mean, we, we, we have a team of internal writers, but uh, uh, Orson, Orson Scott Card and his daughter um, were helping us write the manga, and they, uh, they consulted with us quite a bit on the, on, the back, on the overall story of the game. Yeah, it's been, it's been pretty cool working with a writer of his caliber. Cool. Um, well, I guess so. We're just in the main uh, starting area in a in a town right now. Yeah, this is this, is, uh, this town here is uh, uh, that he's in is called Copacabana, and uh, he's he's pretty nice place then. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, uh, especially during the daytime, it's nice and sunny, very chill. Um, and uh, he's working through some of the uh, you know very initial missions. He's getting some tutorial tips popping up to uh, I think he'll show off one of the abilities for the assault class. That's Crater. Um, you get to slam down into the ground. It does more damage the higher you are when, when you initialize the ability. When you, when you hit the ability and you're nice and high, it does three, four, five times as much damage. I so guess the disadvantage there is you're not, the time that you're, you're spending to charge up the damage is time you're not attacking. Exactly right. I mean, you can still be firing your gun from up there. You have the jump jets. You can be shooting, you know, shooting down while you're jump jetting in the air. What he's doing now is he's connecting to the SIN uplink tower of the town. SIN is the shared intelligence network. And it's basically like um, live internet for everyone all the time. It's, it's information being shared between all the players. So if you tag an enemy, you can see all the different players running around the town there. If he zooms in just a little bit, there you go. You can see all the different players running around the town. Uh, the map is also going to show him the, the area that he's supposed to be heading to for his mission. 
right over there. Okay, so it's pretty easy to navigate around and figure out exactly right. You want to be able to you want to be able to get to the places you're supposed to go fairly easily. And if anyone tags um, or identifies an enemy, all of all of your friends in that area are going to be able to see that enemy. It's going to be identified, like I said, within that same network. This is uh, and this is the live beta. These are these are all players running around playing the beta right now. Yeah, this is not a demo version. This no, is the no, actual. No, this is the game. This, this is, is the game this running. Is what people are people are playing right now out in, out in the beta. Um, we are still in exclusive beta right now, um, but we keep adding people every couple weeks, and uh, if people who are in the beta get invites to give, give out to their friends. We want to sort of grow it organically in that fashion um, so that our servers can always handle the load and uh, so that uh, we can add content and add people and add polish and wash, rinse, repeat, just keep doing that. Yeah, and, that, and that's the type of strategy that will be used uh, all the way moving forward into eventual quote-unquote launch when, yeah. when you feel it's, it's ready to, to move live, I guess. Exactly right. We, uh, uh, you can see he's, he's uh, managed to uh, spawn some of the uh, Aranyas, uh, the little spiderling-type creatures um, that are in this area here. He's got a mission to, uh, to clear out some of the water water missions here. If it's nighttime, you may want to turn on his flashlight. There we go. That's oh, nice. a little easier. Uh, so the the general structure of the game for somebody who maybe isn't familiar with Firefall, it's it is an online game where you can you can fight against others if you want uh, as a as a as a shooter, right, or you absolutely. can go out and attack. Uh, those are all AI controlled enemies, and you can do that in groups as well. Right. The open world is is cooperative players against uh, against computer you know, co-op PVE. Um, you know, there's there's missions and there's resource gathering to do. There's there's, uh, there's these dynamic events like showing over uh, over down by the beach area. You can see that that's where that chosen incursion is. If he heads over there, he's probably going to get smoked. It's really not a solo <laughs> activity. Um, you, you know, he can you can give it a try if you feel like, but generally that's going to get you crushed. Um, but uh, yeah, right now he's like I said, he's in the open world. There's lots of uh, uh, lots of little things to do, and you get and loot dropped. Absolutely, looks like a heavy machine gun he can use for his uh, uh, for his dreadnought battle frame. And he has managed to run into some some chosen here. Uh, you'll notice that you know the chosen are fighting the creatures. You know this is a this is a dynamic world. This is all AI controlled. They're uh, chosen kind of now. He has noticed the player, and the player is quite a bit more of a threat. Crater. Uh, um, and with the help of the uh, of the bugs, he's managed to kill off that show. Okay, so and and in this process, you're you're earning experience to to level yourself up. Absolutely. You notice he's about a he's about a third of the way up through uh, first level there as an assault, and uh, he's earning assault specific. Uh, XP right now that he's going to be able to use. So that's not shared across frames. That's correct. Yeah, that's uh, assault specific. Um, so when you're playing an assault, you earn assault XP, and when you're playing a recon, you earn recon XP. Um, but I guess that is cool if you do find items that uh, the frame you're using isn't necessarily suited for. It exactly. doesn't really work for that uh, that class. It's not you that can your character can't use it. You just can't use it right now. Right. You know, you level up that frame, uh, you, you know, earn the right to use that gear, and then you. Uh, uh, and then put it into your loadout, and you're, uh, you're good to go. And do you, do you have a stash or something where you can just store all, all your extra stuff? Yeah, exactly right. Okay. You, you actually can build uh, different loadouts for different situations. So maybe you know you decide you don't like playing a medic, um, but you really like playing a recon. You love sniping. You could build two different sniper loadouts. One that's that's focused on the long range, uh, the long long range sniping, and then another one that's built about around. Uh, Scouting and, and you know, well, recon essentially, you know, adding enemies to distant networks, your teammates know where they are, um, is a, uh, a subtle but powerful ability. Okay, so if you wanted, if say you like healing and you wanted mm -hmm. to build a medic, yeah. um, but you also wanted to have a little bit of offensive power, right? You could build still two different medic loadouts: one that's aggressive and one that's pure support. Absolutely. In fact, that's how my character is currently built. I've got two different medic loadouts that do exactly that. Okay, and every every character gets the jump jets. Yep. Yeah, all the all the battle frames have jump jets. Jump jets are cool. Games without jump jets are lame. <laughs> Games without jump jets are just not as cool. They're okay, missing the fine. additional You're right. cool. You're right. They could be additionally cool if they were to have. <laughs> it's true. I do like some games that don't have jump jets, but uh, but they're if, rare. If, but if they had jump jets, wouldn't they be better <laughs> across the board? So he's finished off this mission, um, and uh, he's. He's having to run up here, chat, chat with Gretchen. He's going to learn how to use the, uh, the crafting stations over here, the manufacturing stations. 
In terms of uh, player organization, if you did want to get a group together to, uh -huh. to head out to that event or something like that, you could just uh, start chatting with people, but are there are there more formalized methods of yeah, getting a group together? Yeah, you've got friends list, um, you've got uh, uh, the uh, army list right now are only partially implemented, but they're, they are in-game, um, and there's lots and lots of plans for, for armies going forward. So we've got army tech. You know, um, you're going to see probably a thumper mission we're going to do a little later to gather resources with. And the, the one he's going to be using is a personal thumper designed for, for you and maybe a squad of your teammates. But uh, uh, eventually, you know, you're going to see army level thumpers that are, you know, the size of small towns, maybe. I okay. Mean, or I may be exaggerating. <laughs> <laughs> and and armies are just larger gatherings of players. Yes, but they're but they're also larger gatherings that have their own tech tree. So they've got their own, you've got your own advancement. You're going to be working together to uh, to to advance you know your army. Um, and you opt into that sort of like in a guild. Absolutely, yeah. It's okay. it's, it's the equivalent of guilds for us. Um, but obviously, as a shooter, you know, it's a pure action game and, uh, and a little more of a military event. So what he's doing now is he's, uh, uh, he's on a mission to uh, to go gather some uh, some resources. He's got these little tiny sonic detonators to, to crack open some of the uh, uh, We've got our first resource nodes department. there. Um, this is sort of the tiniest level the of resource the gathering. Is is this little you know little handheld detonators? Um, the well, at least you don't have to sit there and, and slam a pick into it or something. Exactly. Like that. We we are you can we just blow it we up. like blowing up our resources rather than um, rather than hitting them with a stick. It's right. uh, sort of one of our core design philosophies. He's managed to attract quite a bit of a, of uh, insect attention <laughs> in here. Um, yeah. So this this is a public space. Yeah, absolutely, and there you can see someone else's turret is over there. Yeah. Um, so it's so yeah, we'll, alone over here. Will enemies just respawn over time? Yes, absolutely. We've got uh, this dynamic res uh, resource system, um, and uh, if if you farm out an area, um, that area could be barren of resources for you know for quite a while until yeah. the uh, the system decides to, uh, to to spawn some more in that in that spot. And and there are instant spaces as well. Um, not in our open world, um, uh, but for some of the PvP for stuff? PvP, we, we we send you off to instance areas to uh, to control it. However, um, all of our PvP areas are in the open world, so you can go and explore those areas and sort of learn the routes and that sort of thing before you get into sort of the stress of a PvP combat. So if you prefer, you can just you know run through that area, and learn about it, learn about the sort of layout of the area um, before you uh, uh, you know have to jump into PvP if you if you prefer. Okay, and, and and if if you were running around with a whole bunch of different people here, maybe competing for kills or something to that effect, mm -hmm. how do, how does the game actually uh, dole out rewards? Do you have to be sort of the last hit, or do you have to tag an enemy initially? Or no, if you can, if you um, there's actually uh, so you can get XP for the kill itself, but if you uh, if you helped out with the kill, you're going to get assist XP, and that's going to actually be a pretty good chunk of the actual overall kill. Um, like, right? And you can get assist for well, um, for healing the guy that gets the kill. You can get an assist for identifying the target, that SIN targeting we were talking about before, and adding that target to everyone else's uh, SIN network. And you can also get a, an assist for uh, doing a chunk of damage to the target. So it's uh, you know if you're running around and you're involved, you're gonna you're gonna get a bunch of XP. Um, Okay, so it's not it's not hyper competitive where everyone's no. just sprinting around yeah, trying to, to get tag it, something. Yeah, it's not all you know. Oh god, I get, if I don't get the last hit, I'm not going to get anything. Right, that's not happening. Good. Um, and yeah, how does uh, a, as you do level up, how how dramatically does your your class change from the beginning of the game to the end? Well, I mean, well, we, not the end. But yeah, we want people to be having fun right out the gate at level one. Um, so we make sure. I mean, obviously, you've got your you've got your primary gun. You also have your secondary weapon. Um, you've got one ability. We're actually thinking about tweaking that up, so maybe even start with two. Um, you know, the, one of the things uh, about Firefall that, that I find really exciting as a developer is, you know, we're just constantly tweaking this game. We're, you're, you know, we this is uh, this is not a, a sort of fake beta, which was really a demo. This is a true beta. We're 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 developing this game with our community, with our fans. You know, just constantly getting feedback from them about what they'd like to see. And if we think it might be fun, we'll toss it in the game and try it. Um, you know, we've done that quite a bit.